Hey everybody, welcome back to Naturally Supernatural. I hope you liked our last episode. But today we got a new topic for you all. And to just start it off, well, I guess it's more relevant towards me and at least for other people, is money and tithing and that whole situation. But Pastor Tom, what is your take on that? Money or at man. least with money, yeah. No. <laughs> Managing well, I mean. I think we talked about money a while back, mm-hmm. you know, first season. Yeah. Right. Um, but I feel like it's more the tithing part that we have a, mm. an issue with, you know, with money. Right. We seem to be able to accumulate it well, but when we try to give it away, it's so hard. It's like drawing blood out of stone. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, you don't find that? Like, a lot of times when mm. people, you see um, earthquakes or you see storms or you know whatever hurricane, natural disaster natural it? disaster it's so hard for people to try to draw 20 bucks out of their pocket mm-hmm. yet they Why can is that yeah they can whack back two starbucks and it costs <laughs> the same um Even but why is so, that yeah. you know the question is why is that like why is that such a tough thing to do to help others in need because it doesn't benefit us i guess directly yeah but Skep- you know, there's a lot of skeptical too. So yeah, that too. Not sh- not sh- not entirely sure where the money goes directly. Mm. So I think that's all a facade for a deeper issue. Mm. I think the deeper issue is is uh, I call it the orphan spirit, like mm-hmm. the the hoarding. Um, people are not able to release things because they are brought up to think that they don't have enough. Mm. It's a society of lack. Mm-hmm. And when you have that uh, preemptive idea of just lack, and if, if I don't store this, or if I don't if I don't um, hoard it, mm-hmm. uh, I may not have any tomorrow, and mm. I better just hang on to it, right? So I think it's a deeper issue to do with um, that often spirit that I talk about often, <laughs> uh, how people. Tend to you talk about how the mistrust happens, mm-hmm. you know, Josh, about you know, where's this money going? Where's mm-hmm. it? That's the often spirit. Like, you know, people before they even get into anything, they put up their boxing gloves and they want to fight. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that they're coming at me, they're coming at me, they they just want my money, you know. Mm. Maybe the church just wants my money. That's mm. why he's so nice to me. <laughs> Maybe that's why the pastor yeah. is so nice and visited me last week. He wants my money. Yeah, it's always, always mm. that part, yeah. Right? So we need to go deeper. I think I feel like we it's a deeper issue than just the money issue. Mm-hmm. Well, in, interestingly enough, uh, number one word that was mentioned in the Bible the most is the word Lord. Mm. And mm. guess what is the second most mentioned in the Bible? Money. Mm. And I know that you've mentioned, we've talked about this during the first season, uh, but today I believe we want to highlight or really speak more on the subject of tithing, mm. right? Mm. Why do we tithe? What is tithing? You know, mm. our beliefs from before and what do, we, what do we believe about it today? And how come some people are generously mm. doing that and some people continually struggle or being challenged to do it so and just the importance of it, Pastor. Mm. So why don't you for a moment just explain to us what's really tithing is mm. about. Mm. Yeah, well, I think to understand any of the um, principles or concepts, kingdom concept, you really need to go back to Jesus' original mission statement. Mm. And his mission statement is repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And so he always preached about the kingdom. It's a place uh, where we came from Mm. as believers. It's a place where all... Uh, it's the source of everything. Yeah. Uh, so Come on. if you got money in your pocket, mm-hmm. you're just the resource of the source. That's right. So um, all those things, when we understand the concept of the kingdom, we understand that uh, we're just stewards of mm-hmm. everything that the king gave us to care for, uh, including our time, mm-hmm. anything, effort, energy, you know, your your body. Mm-hmm. Right? The body is called a living sacrifice. That's right. Imagine yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So you can't be a living sacrifice mm. 
unless you know who owns that body. Come on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you continually think that you own your own body, <laughs> that you are it, uh, you can't part with that. You can't part with anything that is related or connected to your body, including your wallet. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you just can't part with it because yeah. you feel like you, well, I work so hard. Mm-hmm. I earn all this money. Guy's a bum. Mm. Why should I give him the money? He's standing between the median of the street. Mm. Many often times you see in Vancouver, guy walks back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in the median with a hat, up, you know, turned mm-hmm. upside down waiting for yeah. some money, donation. Uh, so many people find it so hard to donate mm-hmm. or to yeah. give. Because uh, giving is, there are four types of giving. Later on we'll get into it. But, you know, the main thing is, is it's not about the act, but it's heart condition. It's That's like, good. how is your heart postured with mm-hmm. God's heart? Like, do you even know your king in the kingdom of heaven? A king's heart is always about giving. He has given us everything. He is the provider. He's the source of everything. And, you know, to a point where he made us, he gave us his breath, mm. life, for what? For what purpose? So that we can express and rule mm. an extension of his kingdom here on the physical earth, his invisible kingdom. So that's the reason why God created Adam, to have dominion over earth. And of course, Adam lost it. Yeah. But even after Adam lost it, you see the heart of giving. The Lord started the redemption plan. Mm-hmm. From, from before they fell even, he already knew that he was going to send his one and only son yes. to redeem everything mm. that was lost and to give us back the authority to access the kingdom again. So um, to me, that's all giving. Mm-hmm. Give, 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 give. Father in heaven gave his only begotten son. Yes. I mean, the only, the closest example I could think of is Abraham. Mm-hmm. That's why he's considered righteous. Mm. You know? Yes. And so it's really important for us to understand giving. Mm-hmm. You mentioned about the four types of giving mm. that you believe, you know, we can explore on today and share to people. What was the first one that you have on your notes there, Pastor? Well, the first one is tithing or mm. tithes. Okay. Right? And uh, we often hear that in church or in in, in any sort of religious uh, society or, or groups mm-hmm. is tithing. It's yep. like giving, right? But tithing is very special in the church of God in, in the context of kingdom. Because mm. tithing, like kingdom, is actually about a governmental rule. Right. Like the government of God from the kingdom of heaven actually requires that we tithe. The mm. reason for that is simply it's a taxation. Mm. And that's mm. why, wow. yeah, it, it, it's, it's to actually uh, supply and run the kingdom mm. here on earth. The reason for that is because, you know, if you remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees when they came up to him and they tried to test him and say, oh, uh, Jesus, should we be paying taxes to Caesar? Mm -hmm. Remember they said about paying taxes? Mm -hmm. And then they talked about the coin. Right. Right? So that whole entire passage was about paying taxes. Mm Mm-hmm. And Jesus answered, hey, you know, who, whose face is on the coin? Mm. And they say Caesar. And he says, well, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Right? So he's still at that point referring to taxes. Mm-hmm. And then he said, he continued to say, give to God what belongs to God. Yeah. Come on. It's still in the context of taxes. Mm-hmm. So you got this tax, heavenly tax is called Tithing. <laughs> because why? That money belongs to God. Just like your tax money belongs to your government, mm. to Caesar. That, you don't, you don't yeah. get a say. You just pay your taxes. You just pay your taxes. You don't pay your taxes, there's actually mm. consequences. Yes. Right. Yeah. Wow, wow. Right? Tax evasion. 
Yeah, so a lot of us Christians, uh, we don't quite understand tithing. Right. Yeah. We think it's just... Uh, Something that we can give. Yeah, voluntary yeah. or what. No, it's <laughs> actually a tax for the kingdom of heaven. So yeah. you actually help run mm-hmm. the kingdom, the, the kingdom mm-hmm. manage the kingdom right. through taxation. Mm-hmm. It's called tithe. Same with your country. Come on. You know, how do you think your government built roads and <laughs> waterways and piping? Yeah. I was just reading about West Van and the drainage and all that, the new pipes they're putting in. It's from taxation. Right. Mm. From paying your house tax. Right. And so we got to know that tithing is there. Number one for us, again, is a hard thing. It's like, do you know? Mm-hmm that we're citizens of heaven. Come on. Mm. Are you a good citizen or a bad citizen? Mm. That's the question. If you're a good citizen and you are actually honoring the king, the supply of all things, he supplied the money by the way that you're tithing. Come on. He just wants you to know Mm. how to be a good manager. Wow. Mm. So if you don't know how to be a good manager, you hoard on to your money. Mm not realizing that it's for the management of the kingdom. There's definitely been a lot of stereotypes when it comes to tithing. But what you just shared just now, you know, gives it should give someone a new perspective, new approach when they when they give their tithe. Mm. Whether it's towards the church, but it's just the understanding that, you know, you mentioned it's it's a heart level. It's more than just mm acting upon what what you believe you should do but it's a hard issue where you start understanding that you're not giving because you're you have to you're supposed to but you understand that your giving plays a huge part on how how the whether it's a church but really overall it's your understanding of 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 the kingdom Mm. and Mm. in that you re- there's a recognition that you understand and you believe that he is the source that even this money is not yours yeah so this should free somebody that is listening right now because i i believe that there is such a a, a disconnect when it comes to this you know when it comes in the subject of tithing where many have been discouraged to give their tithe mm. because they fail to understand this very revelation that mm. It's simply you. It's it's simply your heavenly tax mm. because you're a citizen of heaven. <laughs> you're a citizen, and also your you, it has to do with your identity. Identity. Mm. A lot of people, even church goers, sometimes don't. They say it, but they don't quite actualize it. Like you know, when right when we're called sons and daughters of God, mm. and you know, sons and daughters, mm. right? So the provider is your dad in heaven. Yeah, come he on. provides everything. He's the king, right? And he provides everything. So um, when you understand that, remember earlier on I was talking about how the orphan spirit, Mm -hmm. one that feels like an orphan will always think there's not enough tomorrow. Come on. And so, but when you understand sonship and and daughtership in Christ, Mm -hmm. uh, and you understand that your king is the source of everything, you're just a resource, Mm -hmm. you know that that source is never going to run out. Come on. Yeah. And so every dime that he's given you, he's mm-hmm. given you. Okay? Not mm-hmm. that you earn. Mm-hmm. Right? All right? You, so good. <laughs> why? Because your life is given. <laughs> you didn't earn it. True. Mm-hmm. Right? By his grace. Mm-hmm. Grace is not meritable. Right? You can't earn it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't work for it. Right? So mm-hmm. it's given mm-hmm. by God as a gift. So even your money is a gift. Why? A gift so that we, yes. remember I told you God is about giving. It's a gift so that we can understand management. Because why? When mm-hmm. you understand management, more is coming. Wow. When you don't know, like we learn about mm-hmm. parable of the talents where mm-hmm. people who know how to manage and multiply, more is coming. Right? <laughs> more is coming. So when you don't understand how to manage and how to give, mm-hmm. uh, that's because you don't understand that wow. the giver owns everything. That mm. every dime that you have in a bank belongs to him. Mm. And there's a reason and purpose why he put those money in the bank. He did, mm. not you. Come on. Okay, in your bank and, and for you to grow and manage his kingdom wow. here on earth. So when you don't get that, you're like acting like a pauper. Mm. 
Mm. You have this pauper mentality instead of a, a mm. of, of a prince. Mm. You act like a pauper, mm. and so the whole time you're just fighting everything. Wow! It matters not about money. You know, sometimes you know, like at work too, it becomes a focus. Like if yeah. there's a project or in school, there's a project. Mm. You're just gonna go. Oh no! That I already did my part. That's his part. <laughs> <laughs> but you forget when you put together. When you put together in a team in a in a mm. college. Uh, environment, you have to present the whole entire project as a team. Right. Yeah. Now, if your team don't do it and you just want to hold on to what you did already, mm-hmm. thank you very much. I'm not going to help anymore because that's your part. You should earn your. <laughs> Maybe you should dig deeper and find out what is going on in that person's life. Maybe mm. he just had a, a death in yeah. the family. Maybe something yeah. he's lost a loved one to COVID. Maybe that's the reason why he can't do the research or his mind's not on it. But we, if we act like a pauper, mm. we don't have a benevolent heart. We don't have a giving heart. Come on, to reach out and actually have empathy, right? Mm. And and actually listen to people. Like listening is even giving, because mm-hmm. you're giving your time. That's right, right. So a lot of people find it so hard because they don't understand the concept of the kingdom. Yes, they understand the effects of the kingdom, but they never know about the kingdom because kingdom is not preached. Mm. The whole time we're just preaching about the effects. I'm not saying things are bad, like you know, <laughs> salvation is good, all those things are good, but those are just the effects. Mm. The end game is the kingdom of God, the rulership of God here on earth mm. as it is in heaven. And how can how can we get there if we don't even have the heart of the king? Mm-hmm. Wow, you understand? You can't you can't even give. What kind of society are you reflecting? Right mm. to the earthly society. Yeah. I mean the, the 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 people here, the culture here, mm. because they can't taste the culture of heaven. Mm. The culture of heaven is a giving culture. Yeah. Mm. One that's willing to sacrifice like mm. Jesus did. Mm. Yeah, he sacrificed his life. So that's tithing. Wow. Tithing is so good. taxation for you <laughs> to learn how to manage <laughs> the kingdom by giving back to the king. What do you say? Uh, uh, this is a very common topic that we hear a lot in churches today. You ought to give you 10%. Well, if it has to come from a man, you're in trouble. <laughs> because <laughs> you, what did Jesus teach us? He taught us this. I'm always teaching Jesus, preach kingdom. Okay, mm-hmm. Here's the thing. He taught this. So I'm teaching you about what he taught. Mm-hmm. He said, seek first the kingdom of heaven his and, the, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm-hmm. So when you're seeking the kingdom of God. You're not seeking the kingdom of man. Come on. Yes. You don't have to wait for men to tell you to do things. Mm. When you seek the kingdom, you'll find a benevolent king in the kingdom. Mm. And then you capture his heart. Mm. And when you know how to carry the heart of the father in you, in your heart, mm. you don't have a problem tithing. Mm. Your pastor don't have to tell you uh, you ought to tithe. It's a natural response. Mm. It, well, yeah. It's, it's like, my goodness, mm. I love to tithe. Amen. Because the Lord, or the King, Lord means ownership. Yes. The King is going to, you know, give me more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to do more. Come on. Right? That's what you mean from glory to glory in the Bible. It's like, you've seen this glory, but there's a greater glory coming. Mm. Mm. Come on. So good. But if you don't know how to release, mm. yeah, the cup is so full, God can't fill it up again. Mm. You need to learn how to empty. That's why King David says in Psalm 23, he's saying, my cup overflows. Yes. Amen. The second one is offering. Now, sometimes we see tithe and offering, tithe and offering, envelope pass around the church and we don't even know the difference. We think it's all the same. Right. Mm. right? So it's very different. Unlike tithing, which is required, I told you it's a tax. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, offering is more of a free will thing. Like mm. you're willing to give. You know, like you're willing to give. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you you're gonna you're gonna say, you know what, I, I wanna give more because I know now. I know. 
after I've tithed and paid my taxes, I see what the king does. Mm. The management of the kingdom is amazing, mm. right? So now you want to offer more and more and more and more. You mm. offer your time, you offer your money, you offer everything. Right. Why? Because there's a need for that. There's a lot of people suffering. Mm. True. Honestly, people who have heard the kingdom of heaven and embrace it and take it in their heart, right? They will start to transform as kingdom citizen. And they don't worry anymore. Mm. People are suffering because they worry. Mm. The more they worry, the more they are not even seeking the king. The more they don't know where the source of everything comes from. Mm. They're trying to grapple with everything in life. Striving when they should be thriving. Right? I know it's easier said than done. But the Lord says this in Malachi. You know, if you go to Malachi, this is the Lord talking. And mm-hmm. he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse mm-hmm. that there may be food in my house. Test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven Come on. and pour out so much blessing that there will be not be room enough to store it. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you know, when I read that, it says there won't be enough room to store it. No banks in the world can contain what God is going to throw out at you. Come on. I'm telling you. Mm. You go, well, no, I want a million. Imagine you going to the bank and say, I want to open up a million accounts. <laughs> you say, sir, you got to be crazy. <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah. What kind of dream project is this right because I'm tithing Mm. and I'm offering and the word of my king says test me test me right in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it but you know that takes faith Josh Mm. You go to your banker and you say that, they're going to think you're a cuckoo nut <laughs> case, right? But Most likely, yeah. It, yeah, but it'll take faith. Amen. You try it. God said, test me. Mm-hmm. You tithe and you offer mm-hmm. and you will see the floodgate mm-hmm. open. Mm-hmm. I think that's the heart of that, Pastor. Just, if I can just take this moment where to begin with, you develop a heart to tithe and to offer. And you recognize that it does not matter what the return would would be like because you know that the return or the, the reaping that you will receive will, will be used for His glory anyway. So nothing, understanding that He is Lord, He is the source, understanding that everything that we do is for his glory everything goes back to that and and i feel like sometimes there's there's a lot of people that jumps into this program where you tithe you offer and you expect a, such a blessing mm. that is just beneficial for you but i think even that is something that we need to to, to start talking about because if we miss that concept that nothing is of us we don't own anything. You know, it's it's he is Lord, so he will supply, he'll provide. And I just thought that's it's it's something that we could point out today where you know it gives us an understanding, a purpose of why we why we develop that kind of heart and where where to to position ourselves and really purpose ourselves into why we give tithes or offer. Uh, you know, so many people go into religion and and, and that's Pure religion mm-hmm. is like, mm. I give this, I'm going to get this back. Yeah. Yeah. I give this, I'm going to grow. No, you give in the kingdom, kingdom concept, you know how to invest. <laughs> it's a seed. It's an offering, it's a seed. Come on. You know how to invest, That's things it. will grow. Mm. Right? In kingdom, there are principles. Yeah? You plant a seed, it's going to grow. Mm-hmm. You plant it in the ground, it's going to grow. Like a farmer. He plants all the seeds, doesn't sit there with a bino 
waiting to see <laughs> the first sprout out of the ground yeah. and then believe it's going to grow. No, he plants it. That's mm-hmm. it. He yeah. knows it's going to grow. He knows exactly when he's going to harvest. Yeah. Because that's a principle, right? It's 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 called the natural law that God has put in. So mm-hmm. There's divine law and there's natural law. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you put a fish in water, it thrives. <laughs> Pull the fish out of water, it dies. Mm-hmm. Right? Na- natural law. And same with gravity, right? Same with all those things that God created. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, when you understand the principle, it's all about Him. Yes. Right? When you plant the seed, you're planting into the kingdom. God sees that. The king sees that. Mm. He's looking around. Second Chronicles says his eyes roaming around the world. He's looking for some guy. Mm that can actually capture his heart. Mm. Mm. So when you capture his heart, you say, ah, oh, that's my guy. Mm. Amen. He knows how to give, like me. Mm. Well done, my good and faithful son. My faithful servant. He will all say that. Let's go out and eat and dine, <laughs> right? Come on. Because why? You captured his heart. That's all he wants you to do. Everything he owns, mm. including you. That's it. All you need to do is worship him. Mm. Mm. Worship him. You know, worship, true worship is when you understand who owns everything. Yes. And you go with an open heart with a reverence of, you know, mm. who, who the owner is, the Lord, capital L O R D. <laughs> and then you start giving. Mm. The yep. more you give, the more seeds you plant. The more seeds you plant, the more things are growing. Right? You, you begin to abide in him and he abides in you. It's the word said. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Wow. I'm literally sitting here and I'm like, tithes and offering, just that whole concept of the tithe being a tax is just boggling my mind because it's so easy for us to kind of, because it's church or because it's for God, it should just be, you know, whenever we feel like it, but we don't yeah. feel like that obligation. But then again, it kind of boils down back to understanding his kingdom and how it functions and the concept of how he is Lord and he does own everything. And mm. even with the offering right? Mm. in terms of how you put it, Pastor, as it as an investment, investment yeah. right? Now it just makes sense to me where I'm like, okay, beyond my 10%, mm-hmm. I can always give beyond that. And I'm not limited just to the 10%. Yes. But rather whatever is given after the 10% can be even kind of given to further even more his kingdom and mm. his reign here, right? Because... Mm. I feel like some people, especially in the church setting, they, and I mean, I don't judge them for for thinking this way because it has happened where finances have been used for who knows what. That's right. And for people to actually feel that, why should I bother giving into something like that if it's not going for what I I had intentionally thought of? Mm -hmm. But I think if churches also, not just the, the congregants, but church in general, if they're able to actually get that concept of the kingdom, it just makes such a difference where you're not hounding people to tie. They're not hounding people to, to offer or, or give donations to, which I mean, it is very important to give because there are causes that re- mm. you know rely on finances to operate. But if we can get right back to right teaching and right believing, then mm. that doesn't have to actually be the, the scenario per se. The pressure definitely comes off yeah. with, when it comes to tithes and offering. Well, it's, it really has uh, no connection even to pressure. Yeah. You know, the, the mm. reality is this. You'll be so joyful. Mm-hmm. Like when you preach the kingdom of heaven, instead of preaching everything else, Jesus says this. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that found treasure. He buries the treasure in the ground, sells everything, and then buys that piece of land mm. because he understands the value mm. That's it. of the message. Right? How can you not be valuable when you understand that God provides everything, the king provides everything? Yeah. There's no more strife. Yes. It makes it easier because then you're not right. reliant on yourself. But the key ingredient in there is whether you have the faith to believe mm-hmm. it. And most people have a tough time because, you know, they, they see it as a problem. Mm. 
and not realizing that problems there to reveal how much faith they have in them. Mm. And so when you actually become the solution to the problem, mm. there's a problem. There's, right. there's famine in some way. Mm-hmm. And you become the solution. You say, okay, I'm going to give my first month salary is a new blessing. I got a new job. And your wife's going, are you nuts? <laughs> like <laughs> we have newborn. We have no milk. Come on. Uh, you know, uh, are you going to give the whole entire salary? Yeah. And that type of giving um, is called first fruits. Mm. So when you are willing to give the entire, um, you know, something new, God has given you a new job, something mm. new. And you go, you know what? I'm going to give my first fruit mm-hmm. because there's a need for it, right? There's a need. This country is in need. Mm. So I'm giving 100% of my first fruit, mm. first month salary. That is another different type of giving. That is a giving of gratitude. Mm. You're saying, God, wow. you gave me that job mm. because you want me to do something greater. But here's what I'm going to do. Mm. I've captured your heart. Mm. I know for your namesake, in Jesus' name, for your namesake, yes. I'm giving this full month salary wow. to this country that's going through famine or whatever. Now, you know why in the name of Jesus, for his namesake? Man, a king would never want to be outgived by you mm. because he's the source. Mm. You wow. see, Come when on. you give and you say for your namesake, the king is going, ah, oh, this son of mine, he's got it. <laughs> he's got it. I'm never going to be outgived by him. I'm going to show him what I'm going to do. Yes. Mm. Right? So then the next thing you, you hear is most likely you'll get promoted in that job. Come on. Double your salary, right? But it's not for you. Again, it's for him. It, it's just it's just such something that uh, yeah. is so wonderful. Like it, if you actually live like that, mm-hmm. oh man, you're like so free. It's a heart of gratitude, but at the same time, in that, in that, there is that faith that rises up from the heart, from having that heart of gratitude. And you're right. I don't know. It's, I'm not sure if that's something I've ever done before, but that's definitely uh, not 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 of a challenge, but definitely an encouragement for 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 someone, or including mm-hmm. myself, to you know how 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 do you view God when it comes to you know giving back, right? So we can never put him in a box or mm-hmm. we limit him. <clears throat> Amen. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's the third type of um, yeah, yeah. way of giving. So, right? so the, the, the fourth type of giving is called alms giving. Mm. And um, alms. Yeah, A L M S. So this type of giving, uh, there's many types of giving, but this type of giving, uh, it's like you see, you know, like you volunteer in a soup kitchen or you do something. Time. Um, or you gave a whole ton of money for some uh, charity. Mm-hmm. But here's the alms giving. You don't ever talk about it. Mm. Mm. Right? Jesus says, don't let the what? left hand, right hand. Yeah, yeah knows know what, what the right what hand is. Yes. Doing. And, and so it's 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 this type of giving mm. where you're you're doing it because you're you're so moved by yeah. compassion by God's giving. Yeah. By the generosity and the extravagant of your father in heaven, that you're so moved by it, that it's all about him. So you know to be really quiet when you're giving. Mm-hmm. Now, when see people who don't know alms giving, they give and they say, oh, you know what I did? <laughs> I gave $3,000 to the homeless. And then it's, it's like, what are you going to get? Jesus is, is that what you want? Then that's all you're going to get. That's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> your friends cheering you on. <laughs> but you won't have a reward in heaven. He is. Oh, mm. hallelujah. That's something that we have to pay attention to. Come on. It's not that you have to do this to get that, mm. but you you do it because faith is unconscious because mm. you yes. now know who your papa is. Mm. Extravagant God that don't talk about things. Imagine if God is always gloating. <laughs> You know, I gave out so many units of oxygen yesterday. Mm. You don't hear him say that. Water. Right? I fed the monkeys with so many <laughs> tons of bananas. No, he doesn't say those things. He just does Sparrows. it. He does it. 
Doesn't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He just does it. Mm. Mm. And so many things, like all creation understands that they actually are all doing things. Yes. They're helping each other. Mm. Wow. You know, like one of the things that uh, you talk about arms and I kind of, I was talking to a neighbor mm. right, in my new place and all these trees that I noticed, the pine trees, um, the big giant pine trees, you know, or the, the fir trees, they are somewhat diseased. Mm. They're turning brown, mm. right? And he got talking to me and I said, oh, do you think this, I was saying, do you think this, these trees are struggling? Are they having problems? Oh, yeah. Because I live here very long now and they're always supposed to be evergreen. But they're turning brown. Why? Because a few things have happened, right? Mm. But here's the thing I told him. Like, he told me about that. But I told him, I said, did you know that trees communicate through their root system? Mm. He go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I said, they actually use fungus to deliver nutrients to the tree that's sick. Wow. Come on. Trees can do that without saying a word. And we are out there <laughs> tooting our own horn for giving <laughs> 20 bucks to some homeless. Right. Like, there's something very wrong with mm. our hearts. Wow. Every creation knows God. They're mm. helping each other. Imagine sending fungus food for the tree that's struggling mm. underground that you don't see. Mm. How much are they doing for each other? And yet, we can't even give mm. 10 bucks or 5 bucks to somebody that's struggling without food. Mm. Mm. You know, just one bad bounce here and there, you end up on the other side of the street. Yep. Mm. And I'm just saying, if you're sitting at home and you're going, oh, I'm, I got my... You know, 50 inch TV, you know, new <laughs> QLED, whatever. I mean, just think for a second. Yeah. How many people are struggling out there? Mm -hmm. So it's time to give. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in time, mm -hmm. taxation for the management of the kingdom, mm -hmm. whether it's in arms, right? Whether it's in offering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we got to. Alms. We got to. Or, or, First fruits. First fruits. We, we, we yeah. got to um, capture the heart of the Father by, by being still mm. and understand that, my goodness, the very breath that I breathe mm -hmm. is from Him. Culture of the kingdom. Amen. It's, culture, it's the culture of the kingdom. Mm. Wow. That was a loaded episode, guys. Like my, I'm sitting here and I just... I gravitate towards that because growing up giving was something that we were kind of taught but to put it into perspective in, in a manner that's mm -hmm. not necessarily church way if that makes sense but really in enveloping what the kingdom actually is and how it, it operates and what it does require to operate it mm -hmm. it opens my mind now where tithe is is what i owe to god you know what yes. i have and what i hold what's in my wallet, what I don't have in my wallet, it belongs to him regardless. And to give it back to him as, as an offering of gratitude even, right? Mm. It, it just puts everything into perspective where we can't rely on our own, yeah, hustle and work, but to what extent, right? Mm. But until next time, everybody, God bless. God bless. God bless.